Hello guys, we continue with the second video for chapter 2 semester 1 where we're going to introduce what is atomic orbitals. So now I know that um, in STPM syllabus you don't really need to understand so much about um, the specific details about atomic orbitals. However, for me, uh, I would rather you to know about all these uh, quantum chemistry basic principles in order to introduce what is actually orbitals. So I'm going to introduce from the beginning, okay? Okay, so it is to say that position of electron cannot be specified as electron behave like wave as it extends in space. So Werner Kaus Heisenberg then formulated what is known by the Heisenberg uncertainty principles by stating that it is impossible to most simultaneously both the momentum or the position of the electron with certainty. However, Bohr theory has made a significant contribution to our understanding of atom and his suggestion that says that the energy of an electron is quantized. Therefore, this concept is perfected by uh, Erwin Schrodinger in his equation known as the Schrodinger equation, but we are not going to learn in here, where the energy of an atom can be calculated. Though, uh, Schrodinger equation spec specifies the possible energy state that the electron can occupy in a hydrogen atom. However, it cannot pinpoint the location of the electrons in an atom. Therefore, to counter this problem, we will base with the term orbital, where orbital is defined as a region with high probability to find an electrons. So we say that an atomic orbital is specific by three quantum number. One is related to the auto, uh, orbital size, another is to its shape, and the third one is the orientation in space. So the quantum number has hierarchy, uh, hierarchical uh, relationship and the size related number limits the shape related number which limits the orientation related numbers. So let's introduce to you one by one what is these three quantum numbers. So the first quantum number is called as the principal quantum number. So basically, principal quantum number is better known as shell. It's a positive integer, 1, 2, 3, and so forth, uh, where it indicates the relative size of the orbital and therefore the relative distance from the nucleus of an atom. So the angular, then the next number is called as an angular momentum quantum number L, which is an integer starting from 0 to n minus 1. So it is related to the shape of orbitals and is sometimes called as the orbital shape or azimuthal quantum number. So now that the principal quantum number sets limits on the value of the angular momentum quantum number, therefore n limit L. For example, in the first shell where we have n equals to 1, so L is equals to n minus 1, so when n minus 1, 1 minus 1, you have only 0. So 0 in here means that you have only one type of orbitals. If it is a second shell, n equals to 2, so L is equals to n minus 1. Therefore, you can have 1 and 0. So therefore, the type of the shape of 0 and 1 later will be introduced you in another one, uh, in another symbols. As for the third shell, n equals to 3. So when n, n minus 1, so it can be 2, it can be 1, and it can be 0. And if it is fourth shell, so it is so forth. Okay? So note that the number of possible L values is equal to the value of the n. The next number is what we call as magnetic quantum number ML, which is an integer from the negative L through 0 to plus 1, plus L. So this prescribes the orientation of the orbitals in the space around the nucleus, or simple number of orbitals present in L. So the possible values of an orbital's magnetic quantum numbers are set by its angular momentum quantum. For example, if you have a magnet, uh, if you have an angular momentum quantum equals to zero, so the magnetic quantum number is also equal to zero. Therefore, we say that it contains only one orbitals. For L equals to one, with for uh, for this uh, orbital magnet, uh, for this uh, angular momentum quantum number L equals to one, magnetic quantum number is to say have three different orientation, which is minus one. 0 and plus 1. Therefore, there are 3 orbitals in L equals to 1. For L equals to 2, magnetic quantum number is uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Therefore, in L equals to 2, there are 5 orbitals in it. And finally, based on the magnetic quantum number, there is this what we call as an electron spin quantum number, which represents the assumption of electron act like a tiny magnet. So according to electromagnetic theory, a spinning charge generates a magnetic field and its motion and that causes an electron to behave like a magnet. So therefore, in HML, two oppositely spin quantum in uh, its field accordingly and have the value of plus half and minus half. And therefore, usually denotes as positive for, uh, for um, arrow up, 
for a positive spin quantum and arrow down for a negative spin quantum. So basically, these are the few numbers that you, um, you don't really have to memorize about all these, but I just want to make you understand how do we have orbitals. Okay, so uh, these tables actually summarize to you about uh, what is the principal quantum number and what is the angular momentum, what is the magnetic number and what is the electron spin. So for example, if you have a first shell n equals to 1, so you have angular momentum 0, which have a magnetic, which in other words, orientation of 0. So 0 can be filled in as plus 1 and minus half. Okay, and if you have a second shell, second shell can have the angular momentum of 0 and 1. So 0 have 0 orientation. 1 has minus 1, 0 and plus 1 orientation. So each of them are filled with oppositely spin magnetic quantum number. So um, and so forth. Lah. Okay, so uh, this is the basic principles of about um, quantum numbers. Okay. Okay, now let's convert it into a more um, relative uh, methods where the energy state and orbitals are described in the specific and associated with one or more quantum number. So just now, when we say it's about principal quantum number, we are going to relate with what we call as energy levels. Where energy levels is the atomic energy levels of shell which are given based on the value of n. Therefore, the smaller the value of n, the lower the energy levels, the greater the probability of electron closer to the nucleus. So n equals to 1 is the closest, followed by n equals to 2, n equals to 3, and so forth. Whereas the sub-level, sub-level actually uh, means that the L, which is the angular momentum quantum just now. So um, instead of by using uh, integer, we have uh, designated the orbital shapes for it. So each sub-letter has a letter, each sub-level has a letter designation, where when we say L, which is the angular momentum equals to zero, uh, in, the, in the real case, we actually represent by S orbital. If we say L is equal to 1, we actually represent it by using P orbital. When we say L is equal to 2, where we, we actually represent by using D orbital. And we say L equals to 3, we represent by F orbital and so forth. Okay, okay. so orbitals, uh, each allows combination of N, which is the principal quantum number, L, which is the angular momentum number, which can be related to ML, which is the angular momentum quantum number, uh, values specified once of the atom. Thus, the three quantum number are described as an orbital expressed in size, shape, and also spatial orientation. So you can easily give the quantum number of the orbitals in any sub-level if you know the sub-level designation and the quantum number hierarchy. So uh, in convenience, we say that when energy level n is equal to 1 which has a sub-level equals to 0, so we have only one type of orbitals which is ML0, so therefore number of orbitals is 1. So in terms of the atomic orbitals designation that we introduced earlier, so since it is first shell, we have a uh, sub-level of 0, so therefore the atomic dis orbitals designation is 1s. If we have energy level n equals to 2, which is the second shell, second shell have two sub-level of 0 and 1. So in terms of orientation, 0 has one orientation 0, where uh, 1 has three orientation, minus 1, 0, and plus 1. So in here, there are total or so-called as a three orbitals in here. So these three orbitals in terms of atomic designation is known as 0 is 2s, minus 1 is 2px, 0 is 2py, and plus 1 is 2pz. And if we have energy levels n equals to 3, I would say it is in the third shell. So third shell, we have three sub-level, which is 0, 1, and 2. So 0 has the orientation of 0, Minus 1 has a 1 has an orientation minus 1, 0, and plus 1, while 2 has the orientation of minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. Therefore, the number of orbitals for each sub levels are 1, 3, and 5, respectively. In terms of orbital or atomic orbital designation, since it is a third shell, so third shell with a sub level 0, we give 3s. So, third shell of the sub level 1 we give as 3px, 3by, and 3pz, and for sub-levels at energy level n equals to 2, we have 3dxy, 3dyz, 3dxz, 3dx square, y square, and also 3dz square. So these are the atomic orbitals designations and each. So for conveniences, we are going to use all these atomic orbitals designations in the electronic configuration later. So uh, how does the shape of, of orbitals look like? So for s orbitals, which is uh, orbitals with uh, 
angular momentum L equals to zero has a spherical shape with the nucleus at its center and is called as an s orbital. So one s is small, two s is greater, and three s is even greater. So s orbitals, uh, the the number of s orbitals is proportional to the number of uh, energy levels. Then it says that the p orbitals, so an atomic with L equals to 1 is called as a p orbital which has two regions or lobes of high probability, one on either side by the nucleus to find an electron. So the nucleus lie in the northern plane of these dumbbell shapes orbitals and are described as below. So this is a PZ orbital, PX orbital which lies at the X plane, PY orbital which lies at the Y plane, and PZ orbitals which lies at the Z plane. So if you have d orbitals, d orbitals you have five. So this is how the five orbitals looks like. So generally, students you don't have to know how to draw for p, uh, d orbital, but you should at least know how to draw s orbitals and also p orbitals shapes. Okay, and for orbitals with a higher energy levels, which is f orbitals, uh, so it has a multi uh, multi lobe shape, which I'm not going to introduce to you in here. However, you can find it on the net on your own if you insisted you want to know how does f orbitals shape looks like. Okay, okay. So um, with this, I finish introduce about the atomic orbitals. So hope that uh, you stay tuned to the next one where we're going to learn about electronic configuration. Okay, see ya.